Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. Head over to audibletrial.com slash jumbled and get your free 30-day trial and a free audiobook. They've got all of the books. They've got so many books and uh, not books, audiobooks. They've got all of the audiobooks for your listening pleasure, for your ear holes. Head over, check them out. Let's get to the podcast. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Jumbled, your favorite podcast about nothing. I'm Zach. I'm Johnny. Oh man, I if if I sound a little nasally today, I've I kicked up some dust or something, dude. I don't know what it is, but I'm uh, I'm super nasally right now. I hear it. So, dude, so, what is going on in your basement? Uh, there's a lot. You know what? It's a it's pandemonium, is what I like to call it. Um. So this past week, which by the way, uh, sorry for the uh, for the delay here in getting episodes out. Uh, we had the snafu with Joe, where it ended up being a <laughs> ended up being a no go on that on that episode. Um, and then Johnny was on vacation, and I was actually uh, I had a staycation dealing with some uh, some medical stuff here around the house, and uh, and so I was. Uh, you know, hanging what happened out. with Joe? So Joe, uh, we had like weird. I don't know if it was on his side or if it was on on my side, but it was like the audio kept dropping out while mm. we were talking. So there was a lot of a Fuck lot of an me, amateur hour. A lot of me telling a story, and then it would get to the end of the story, and Joe would go, "What?" what? <laughs> it was like. I can't release this, man. So maybe at some point, maybe at some point, just for shits and giggles, I'll I'll release that. And we'll call every... it what what in the butt. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, but to answer your question, there's a lot of pandemonium going on around here. Uh, I see basically, that. basically, I've uh, I've been the I've been doing so, everything solo around these parts for uh, for the past week or so wife had a procedure and so i was caring for her i took last week as personal time and uh Mm. and so she was down for the count of course the kids are no help because they're kids and so kids and so they i clean up uh an area up and then they come back around and they uh and they make a mess of it so like little tornadoes like little tasmanian devil tornadoes Mm -hmm. it's good to see your face johnny yeah man i missed you yeah, I did. I always was, miss you. Oh, I miss you too. How was uh Cali? Cali was pretty awesome. Yeah. Um, went to San Francisco. It's my first time in San Fran. Yeah, it was cool. I wouldn't, you know, I had a good time. I enjoyed uh-huh. it. It was. Sure. I'm glad I went. You're not big on Birkenstocks. I don't know if I would go back. Honestly. So what? That's sort of funny that you were going to San Francisco. I didn't know you were going to San Francisco. I knew you were going somewhere in California, but uh, but I gave a, a a ride for like Uber to these uh, these two guys who are from San Francisco, and they were like shit talking on Kansas City, me- like mega shit talking on Kansas City, um, and they were you know talking up San Francisco and. Mm. Uh, while I don't, I, I, I'm sure it's beautiful. I've never been, so I can't next speak time, on it. Next time you have that happen, you say, yo, I didn't realize that you valued having human feces all over your streets so much. Oh, there's a lot of shit on the, on the streets. Oh my God. So much. They have like a police force, the poop patrol that just goes and cleans up human shit. <laughs> no. Is that real? Yeah. The poo patrol. Please the tell me that's like. Please tell me that it, that's what it says on the back, on like on know. their shoulders. You know how like sheriffs, yeah. like the sheriff will say patrol. sheriff. <laughs> please tell me it says poo patrol <laughs> left to right. No, I I mean it's 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 a good city. I mean it, it's a. a is there a home? Bit. What a home? Is there a homeless issue? Homelessness. Yeah. Okay. It's California. It's too expensive to live. One, even if you have a good job, you're homeless. Sure. Two. It's fucking warm all year round, so you ain't gonna freeze to death. That's true. So it makes sense. If I was homeless, I would try and make my way out that way. 
Yeah, and you've got a lot of uh, soft-hearted people out there who mm-hmm. are who are very uh, generous with their did you their hear that efforts and times and stuff that the city board or community association or whatever in San Francisco um, tagged NRA and its members as a terrorist organization. I mean, while I don't agree much with the NRA, I think they have their place. I definitely don't think they're a terrorist organization. Mm-hmm. That's that's a little extreme, but that's California for you. Everybody mm-hmm. feels like they're getting attacked twenty four seven. So yep. Um, but I saw some whales, which was cool. Yeah. Saw a lot of seals and sea lions. I uh, I saw I. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know if it was Snap or if it was Instagram, but you're talking about like your uh, you you saw some seals and you were equating them to your spirit, spirit animal. animal. Oh yeah, that was yeah. at Fisherman's Wharf in San Francisco. Highly recommend it. It was pretty cool. Yeah, went to a Ripley's. Believe it or not, did you believe it? Uh, not. No, it was it was so dated. That place does not. Yeah, does Ripley's. Not believe it or not, does not hold up anymore. I don't think I went to one. I think it was in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. What the fuck kind of name is that? That's where uh, Dolly Parton is from, Pigeon Forge. Hmm. That's where the the beautiful mountains of Dolly Parton were formed. Interesting. Learn something new every day. Um, we drove down the Pacific Coast Highway, the Highway 1, which was pretty cool. Yeah. It was a fun drive. Um made our way down to just just shy of Los Angeles and then we drove up through the desert to Mammoth Mountain and then we stayed at Mammoth Mountain for a few days it was um Wally's wedding actually oh nice well congratulations Wally and uh so we were there for a few days which was pretty sick and then we drove through Yosemite and Redwoods all the way back to San Francisco and it was fun saw Xavier which was super cool that's snap. awesome. That's yep. a wild Xavier showed. <laughs> uh, Xavier is he's our he's our buddy from from college. I hadn't seen him since he was working there, which would have been twenty. I think I was up there in twenty eleven. Mm-hmm. I saw last time I saw him was my little sister's after her freshman year because I went there to help her move out. Yeah, and he was working there. And I chilled in his room, and we played Madden, and then I left my copy of Madden there, and I was really sad. <laughs> oh. So, Xavier, you owe me Madden. Y- y- you owe him a brand new copy of it. Sure not does. that, Not that 2011 bullshit. Nope. Yeah, I don't know, man. He said he, he promised he was going to make his way out to Canada. So there you go. We'll see. My track record with... Uh, with you know Americans and making their way out to Canada isn't great. So no, it's not. It's not great. I'm sorry. <laughs> but maybe that's the motivation for you. You get your passport. Mm-hmm. We'll get Xavier out there, out here. Maybe Joe will, will be able to take a baby break. We have a little little HP reunion. Yeah, we could do like a. I don't know how big uh, X is into. Uh, backpacking or hiking but i'm sure there's some uh... he's pretty outdoorsy now so we could we could probably convince him to do that i think he'd yeah. be down cool i'd be down too well yeah uh... you know what the first step is uh yeah first step is is uh daydreaming about it then uh the next step is night dreaming about it night dreaming and the third step is just uh procrastinating heavily and then the fourth step is completely missing the mark and then it being too late to do anything and then fifth step is is passing the buck right uh sounds good <laughs> sounds sounds about right no yeah obviously first step is to get get my passport i understand that okay i have a real we have a real conversation we need to have here too sure 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 number one go pats go Antonio Brown. Oh, baby. 
I always what, forget you're a Pats fan. What a beautiful shit show that is going to that great team. Yeah. Yeah, I have a feeling that he'll have pretty good success there, but it's not it's I mean, he's a genetic freak. Tom Brady is a is a freak. Bill Man. Belichick is a freak. So it's like he's he's set up for success. I just hate it. The uh the Tom Tom watching the Pats game on the weekend. Uh-huh. It looked like Tom Brady was out there playing catch with his kids. He was so chill. And his O-line gave him so much time. He just sat in the pocket and just, okay. Oh, yeah. he got the ball. Okay. Who, uh, he, who'd they play again? Pittsburgh, and they shot oh, all yeah. over him. Oh, yeah. Well, the Steelers are a shell of a team now. They're not They're not where they were. Um, Not even close. No. The Packers won, but they had a much lower scoring game. But it was versus the Bears, so it was a division game. Which was a big game, yeah. And they did good. Big big game they did they did good. The defense really stepped up, but Aaron Rodgers was getting rushed all over the place. And that's probably just partly Khalil Mack and the force that he mm-hmm. the force that he brings to rushing the, yeah. the passer. So, so. You you're up to date on all the Antonio Brown bullshit and well, he's with the Raiders. I, you know, I just knew he was with the Raiders, and he wasn't happy for some reason. He but. made a bunch of like social media videos to get released. He swore at the GM, like got fined, didn't want to pay the fine, didn't show up the team meeting. So the conspiracy is that all the team meetings that he was missing, he was actually spending it with the Pats and learning their uh, offense. Because nope. <laughs> he got released, and within five hours, he had signed with the the Patriots, who did pursue him when he wanted to leave. Um, Pittsburgh, but sure. obviously they didn't want to trade within. And uh, so there's obviously a connection there, but a little suspicious that all this happens. And then, <laughs> oh, look, five hours later, I'm signed with the Patriots. I'm glad about it. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> but I am not a blind follower and understand that there's some shadiness that goes on. Sure. That's partially why I like them. You like them because of the shadiness? I like the dirty, dirty. <laughs> All right. You know, I, I can't, I don't think I can really get with that. But, uh, yeah, you're right. It's very suspect. You know, like, uh, what uh, what's a comparable situation? I can't even think of one. But, like. It doesn't matter. It does not matter. It's, you know, that that doesn't, that doesn't happen unless there's some premeditated some talks or something that have happened. Oh yeah, definitely. There's some, there's some shady shit going on there. Um, sticking with the world of sports right now. And on, uh, this episode of jumbled sports, you know what? I, I did a serious disservice to our podcast, um, a few weeks ago and I did not talk about the steep a DC fight. I don't know anything about it, so uh, inform me. All right, so July, we got to go back to July, okay, twenty eighteen. Okay, a little over a year ago. Uh, yeah, just over a year ago, Stipe, the three-time defending heavyweight champion, the greatest heavyweight champion in UFC history, most title defenses, three or four. Um, he fought Daniel Cormier. Who okay. came up from light heavyweight, although he started his career as heavyweight, went to light heavyweight, had a lot of success, and then got his ass whooped by John Jones numerous times and decided that he wouldn't do that anymore, so he went up to heavyweight and he knocked Stipe out. And okay. I was devastated. Yeah. Devastated. It was a good fight. It, I mean, it was a first round knockout, so there's always that. Yeah. Um and uh Sorry, I have a guy texting me about trying to buy the Corolla, and he now he's saying he wants to send me money, so I'm real excited. Um, <laughs> sell oh, it, baby! Sell it, what sell am I going to buy now? Oh, shit. <laughs> um, so uh, I was pretty pissed. There was some bullshit. There was some eye poking. At the end of the day, Stipe got caught, and uh, right. he wanted the rematch immediately. He should have got the rematch immediately. Um, but the reality is the UFC doesn't like Steve because he's not an exciting fighter. 
he's a great fighter. He's very technical. Right. But he finds a weakness and he exploits that weakness. Um, right. He's a very strategic fighter. He's not a brawler, and the UFC loves brawlers and or shit right. talkers, and he's neither. Right. Although I think he has an amazing story. He's a full time fucking firefighter. That's yeah. That's he is the ass. people's champion. Um, that's true. So he lobbied and lobbied and lobbied, and then DC was like, "Well, I beat you in the first round, so I don't fucking like. What's the point? I can't do any better. There's no point in fighting you. Like, blah blah blah." And then DC DC took some. BS fucking tune up fights for just whatever. Um, so then finally they announced that it happens, and I am like, shit, my pants happy. Um, <laughs> so August 16th is when the fight was. So it's almost a month old now. I'm still running on this high from that fight. Um, so all the hype that goes into it, all the training, and I'm like, Stipe is, he's going to be better. He's going to look at, he's going to watch the tape. He's going to see what he did wrong. He's going to fix it. He's going to change up his style. He's going to solve this fucking monster. I'll be honest. Like the only two losses DC has is to John Jones. Like he's an incredible fighter. I like him. He's a great guy. He has a great style too. Brilliant wrestler. Love it. Yeah. Um, but I just, I I just love, you know, the down to earth Stipe. Um, so go through all the hype, watch the fight. I'm supposed to work that week, that weekend. And I am like driving as quickly as possible from out of like home from out of town to make it for the fights. And I sit down and it's just like me and Ali didn't want anyone else around me. I just wanted to enjoy, enjoy the fight. Yeah. And, and it comes and I'm just like shitting bricks. And the first three rounds are just DC. Just, just, dominating stipe just Ooh. just doing what he always does and like stipe just doing what he did this first fight like had yeah. some good shots but the interesting part was like stipe took a lot of punches took a like had a lot of damage like was pretty bruised up a little cut yeah. but it didn't didn't dc didn't have that knockout power and i think stipe yeah. realized that and what a lot of pe- speculation was when stipe got knocked out before is he fought francis and ganu like I don't know, six or seven weeks, uh, two months to say, before that, and Francis Agano is the arguably the scariest stand-up person in, in heavyweight right now. Like, will knock your head clear off your shoulders. Yeah. Um, and Stipe took some massive hits in that fight, and we now know that your jaw is a finite resource. And Stipe did, didn't get knocked out in that fight. Like he won that fight really well. Like dominated, but ate some huge shots. And then he got, you know, knocked out by by DC with this kind of in the clinch, dirty boxing, coming out of like coming out of a clinch and takes a takes a shot and goes yep. down. It was a little Popped bit surprised. Or something. Yeah. Just it was really shocking, but you know, a lot of experts kind of dug into it and was like, well, he probably wasn't fully recovered from the first fight and he took some fucking bombs. So Stipe yeah. didn't fight for the entire year. He was like, I want a title shot or nothing. This is what I deserve. I defended that belt three or four times. I can't remember. Right. Most winning is heavyweight champion. Give it to me. Gets the fight and he comes in. DC landing some some good, clean shots. Stipe just pushing forward. It was like fucking watching Rocky. And then, <laughs> and then uh, I think at the end of the third round, he did get a takedown on DC. And he was the first person other than John Jones to score a takedown on Daniel Cormier, which is also pretty incredible. Well, so you, you have go. this little sign of hope. And then fourth round comes out and this fucking light bulb just goes on with Stipe and he starts working the body left hooks to the body just grinding on DC's body and you just see the defeat starting to form in in DC's eyes one he's giving it like landing bombs and Stipe's just walking forward like some kind of fucking zombie like I don't care like right I'm gonna keep doing (laughs) this and then he starts transitioning to the body and uh, he fucking knocks knocks DC out and I went ballistic yeah yeah ali had gone to bed at that time because it was a late <laughs> fight and i was holding on the pillow and the whole time first like first three rounds I'm like fuck fuck like this is gonna happen again it's gonna happen all over again like come on you you made no adjustments you're better than this fourth round comes on completely different fight right and, uh, and just fucking tkos him and i'm like holding my, like this pillow like like jumping but trying not to stomp yeah. and just like whisper yelling like yes 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 i was so 
<laughs> fucking happy. If y- if y'all haven't, anyone hasn't seen that fight yet, look it up. You got to watch the highlights. I think it's a perfect example. It's almost like a Rocky scenario where you get yeah. your ass kicked for the majority of the fight, and then all yeah. of a sudden you're like, oh, I figured it out. Yeah. That's exactly it's, what happened. It's the, same, it's the same scenario with, uh, you know, what Ali did with the rope dope you know, where he'd... Yeah, you know, I mean, you could say there's of... a bit of wearing DC out. DC has really good cardio, even though he's kind of a pudge. He's just, he's a wrestler. He's got amazing cardio. Like, body type doesn't matter. You're If you're a wrestler, you're going to have good cardio. That's just... Sure. There's no doubt about it. Um, he just... I, I think he wore him out, and then going to the body, he, like, just... DC didn't yeah. know how to deal with that body, and it was like head, body, head, body, head, body, and just like yeah. alternating like that, and you know the mental aspect. And to me, that is what made Stipe like a brilliant champ is that he he figures it out, and right. you know, like everyone said, Francis Ngannou was going to absolutely destroy him because he was, you know, Francis was on this tear, just knocking everyone out, everyone out, right. and and Stipe just manhandled him, just threw him off off his game and that's what he finally figured out how to do to dc and i think there might be a third fight i don't know i know dc's been talking about wanting to retire but we'll see um so anyways is that something you want to see um i would definitely watch it i think it would be good um i you know if, if if in my dream world i know this will never happen it's wishful thinking what I really want to see is John Jones go up to heavyweight. I know he kind of wants to. I know he wants to be a champ champ. Right. Um, I would love I would love for John Jones to, to step up and be Stipe and Jones. Um, and DC retires but joins joins Stipe's camp. No, oh, okay. Because DC and Jones have like a very, very long history – and I think it would be a great opportunity for redemption for DC. I think there's a bit of a mutual respect now between Stipe and DC. Sure. Um, and I think that would be an incredibly technical fight. They're both very intelligent technical fighters. Um, yeah. Honestly, I don't. I don't know, man. We haven't really seen Jones at heavyweight. He, you know, he kind of walks around at a natural 225 to 230. Right. So right. it's wouldn't be it'd probably be fairly comfortable for him to be at that weight. I think that would be a really cool a really cool fight. Um but Jones is a little bit older now. He's younger yep. than Stipe and he show he showed some uh some uh cracks in his armor and in his last fight versus um Thiago Santos. So I and I, I would be willing to bet that Stipe is aware of those those cracks and would would take advantage. But if it came back to the you know the third the third fight between Stipe and DC, I'd be happy. Um, it would be really interesting. I there would definitely be adjustments that would be <coughs> would be made, and I think DC would rely on his wrestling more. And he didn't he didn't wrestle as much as I thought he would. Mm. And I th- I think that would have that definitely could have changed the pace of you think he was sort fight. of you think he was sort of playing into Stipe's sort of wheelhouse he wasn't do, he wasn't yeah. sticking to what he 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 knows he should have done yeah I, it's I, sort I, of like a, a Ronda Rousey scenario I mean we oh yeah 100%. Uh, that's always the one I go back to because it's it's a pretty notable one when you try to stand and bang and you're not that's not what you do you know then it's probably not going to go your way yeah, she well, she, yeah, one hundred percent. She went away from her bread and butter, and yeah. I don't, and not that DC did that. Like he's got great hands. He had a great technique. He had great dirty boxing. He had takedowns. He had some ground and pound. You could see like Stipe is a good wrestler. He was outclassed. He's not an Olympic level wrestler. He's a great wrestler. There's right. just another level to that, right? And uh, I would not be surprised if there was a third match that you would see it on the ground a lot more, um, and that was going to make things really interesting so i think it'd be a great fight i think there's justification for it um i don't know yeah i think at this point it's probably just timeline right because they're not gonna line it up really you know too close to each other back to back right no they'll and you know what i think i think stipe learned a lot from the francis to dc1 fight 
and mm-hmm. that you know he's gonna want to take some time to rest. Sure. He took some damage. Like he took some damage. Yeah. And I think he realizes the importance of that rest in between those fights. Um, yeah. But realistically, if something got announced now, it's it's at least two months out. So yeah. there's a little bit of a rest period there. But I don't know. We'll see. I feel like there should be mandatory, like a mandatory rest period. There for, are if you for, get there is if you get knocked out. I think it's three. Oh, months is it? Oh, if you get knocked that, out, that seems like it's not long enough. Like no. three months, you know, it's a traumatic brain injury. You catch some hands. Those I don't know how fast UFC uh, gloves are traveling, but uh, a fast. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, you get hit the right way, and it, it's a it could be a life changer, you know. So. Mm-hmm. Anyway. So, anyways, I'm sorry I had to go back in time a little bit on that, but it was a brilliant fight. Y'all should watch it. Yeah. It's it's a great example of overcoming adversity and and a huge pivot in strategy that that yields some pretty awesome results. Yeah, I think that's the most impressive thing about fighting for me is it's like you see these um, these matches that that go pretty far pretty far into it like it maybe doesn't go the full five rounds but but you uh you see the fighters are still able to even after taking shots and eating shots and taking a lot of a lot of damage they're still able to mentally be there Mm -hmm. they haven't been shaken up enough where they can still uh you know put two and two together and, and still pull the game plan out and execute and i mean that's why they're that's why they're at the top you know also you, true yeah yeah so so all right um so there i mean there was another big fight this past weekend but not as big of a deal to me so we can skip it um but what i really want to talk to you about is my legitimate concern about all my products listening to me and the type of advertisements i'm getting <laughs> like facebook like facebook sending you ad- advertisements based yeah on- so so you know the, you know Facebook has like the wish whatever shopping made fun sponsored thing. Oh sure, yeah. So I'm gonna show you a couple pictures. I'm gonna show you the first one of I was scrolling on my phone, laying in bed with Allie, and we were I was just like cruising Facebook and she was like kinda watching T V and then she stopped me and said, What was that? And it was the wish shopping and I wanna show you the first advertisement that came up. Okay. <laughs> Wait, what the fuck? Is that like a little bottle for a kid to pee in? Yes. And she was like, why is that a, a like, <laughs> why, <laughs> why, is why that is that targeted advertisement for you? What the <laughs> fuck are you Googling? So for the listeners at home, it's a tube that has like a face on it. So almost like you're pissing into its mouth oh and it's God. like. It's like accordion-like, so you can fold it up really small or stretch it out if you got a big, big piss coming. And it's a picture of a lady just holding it up to a kid's crotch. He's got his shorts on, but just like showing, like, hey, this is what it's for. You ram this on your kid's cock, and he pisses in it, and then you close the lid. You carry it around. Oh, my God. I don't even know how advertisers could even... I don't... Why? And why does it have to have a face on it? Yeah. Like, why are you sticking your dick in some, like, I don't know, it almost looks like a hippopotamus's mouth. Make it a bullseye, you know? Just make it a bullseye. It is. Look, if I zoomed in on the side. Look at those faces. Oh, my God. Yeah, why? It's like a frog and a bear. A bear that's, mouth. That's like if, if I fucked a fleshlight and it had a face on it. I mean, that exists, but, you know, that's a little bit different. It's not for a no, kid. No, not, not a mouth. No, I'm not yeah. saying I'm not saying a mouth. I'm saying if if I went to stick my junk in some stuff and there was a face looking back at me with a big smile or something, that'd be weird. So that started us with a, well, what else are you getting advertisements for, John? So we started sliding through that wish uh, shopping made fun sure. advertisement, and then I came across cat bondage. What? <laughs> no. No. Oh, hold on. Is that a mask or something? It is like a leather mask that you put over your cat that covers its mouth and its eyes. It's like sensory like, deprivation for the cat? Yeah. But it looks like a fucking leather, like BDSM bondage <laughs> mask for cats. 
Is there a red ball? Is there a, is there a red ball in that cat's mouth, Johnny? I don't know. Maybe. So, <laughs> Allie, Allie yeah, wrote into up, me man. real hard about that one. Was like, what are you looking up? What the fuck is going on? Am I married to a psychopath? Probably. What is it? What? Is, well, yeah, probably. But she's like, not that kind though. It's like, what? What the fuck? Like, just making fun of me hard. Sure. Super fucking hard for a couple of days. A week <laughs> goes by. We're driving from Mammoth on our way to San Francisco. Yeah. Allie's on Reddit, who also uh-huh. has targeted advertisements. Sure. And she starts laughing hard. And it's just going, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. And I, I think something serious is going on. So I, like, kind of look over while I'm driving, like, what the fuck's happening? She lifts up her phone, cat bondage. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, who's the fucking weirdo now, Allie? Dude, I think I think there's some legitimacy to, uh, like, websites like Facebook or you know, Google or whatever, they, they, I think there's some microphone usage that's happening because I've heard stories of people that just are talking Mm -hmm. about things. Oh yeah. I've had that too. I, I've, I, the weird, the one that weirds me out the most is I was, had a session with Lacey and she was talking about a client who used like hair powder to cover his bald spot. Yeah. And my phone was like in my backpack. And then two days later, I got home and fucking sitting on the dumper. And what happens on my Facebook advertisement? Hair powder. Yeah, there's there's something to it, man. And it's sort of skeezy. And I don't know that I, uh, I really prefer it. And it makes you want to go back through all your apps and make sure that you're not allowing microphone access and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But uh, but I'm also uh, I also got a lot of apps installed, so I'd have to do that a lot. Uh, yeah, it's a pain in the ass. At the end of the day, like, uh, whatever. Yeah, it's not really I- impacting my life. I get some weird advertisements, probably from this podcast. We're talking about weird shit all the time. It's so, true. That's so where it came Siri. from. That's where your cat bondage came from. Yeah, I, you know what I want to do though. What they, I think they should do is, if they're selling our data, I want a percentage. Sell my data. I want a percentage. I want a royalty check. You know, yeah, ten percent. I think that's pretty fair. Yeah, man, you can have everything. You fucking, I'll I'll send you dick pics. Do you want a picture of my <laughs> chocolate starfish? I'll send you that. You want to put it in some kind of registry? <laughs> chocolate starfish, dude. No, I don't think anybody wants that, Johnny. Oh, there's people that want it. There's people that want your chocolate you sp- starfish? Have you, well, just chocolate starfishes in general. Yeah. You know what's also really weird huh. that, I, that I've seen, like, people kind of making fun of it, memes? That there's this, like, fad now with dudes who want to buy women's bath water. Dude, there's, there's this chick, and I can't remember what her name is. But she was selling her bathwater, and this dude bought it. And I think I saw it could have been a fake article, but it was like man, man is hospitalized after drinking bathwater. Yeah, there's like or, soap in, in it. Like what? <laughs> and what do you? I guess what do you do with it? You drink it? You smell it? You like you pour, pour it, it on yourself? You pour it on your dingling and pretend that you're the bathwater that's surrounding the naked lady. That's so weird. I mean, I mean that's what I think. I mean that's me what wrong. I do. That's what I do with my purchased bath waters. Mm. I don't want to kink shame anyone as long as you're not hurting anyone. Sure. But come on, like, where do you draw the line? Yeah, there's definitely a line that that is, can be crossed. Why do you want someone's dirty soapy water? You can't even drink it. Yeah, I mean. I mean, that, I guess you can, and you risk some kind of weird stomach infection like this fuck got. But sure. I mean, you. You take a you wash your body for a reason, yeah. You know? mm-hmm. It's because it's filthy. And you but then it got sh- me thinking. You took a big old nasty shit. And what you is? Didn't wipe well. <laughs> yeah. Some people want that though too. Yeah, um, it's true. I I listened I listened to this podcast for a little while, um, 
and it had some alternative models on it and they were talking about requests that they've gotten for like custom videos uh-huh. and uh, apparently like dump pictures and videos are really really popular like guys really get off on women taking shits no i don't no i always say that i'm down to try everything at least twice um <laughs> at least twice <laughs> Is is there anything you would do only once? Well, I sure as hell won't do any scat porn ever. Although I would, I mean, I would. I don't be, know. You, you said I'd twice, be willing right? to be paid to do it. <laughs> would you? Yeah, man. If someone someone wants to pay me to take a video. I shit three to five times a day, Zach. Do you know how much money that could be? That's I mean, those that's videos. A lot, yeah. Apparently, those videos sell for like five hundred bucks. Yeah. So. If I'm making fifteen hundred bucks a day doing what I'm gonna do anyways, yeah. I mean obviously you got to put a little production effort into it, but that's what I got you for. Sure, 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 yeah. Well, you, you know your uh, your your body is in good shape, right? You're you're a physically active guy. You're you're. Uh, I'm moderately attractive, I think. You, you know, you look you look good on a camera. You can move around. You're you're wiggly. You know. Yeah. You, 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 there could be a you career got that here. Going for you. There could be a career. Actually, I think tomorrow you need to go put your two weeks in and just immediately start advertising. <laughs> no, yourself. you got I mean, you want to generate like a following and some success first. But could you imagine that conversation of, "Hey, uh, so I'm going to quit. Oh, did you get a new job? Well, sort of. What are you doing? Uh, I'm in media. Oh, what kind of media? Um, well, I have a hyperactive digestive system, and there's people that are willing to pay me fifteen hundred dollars a day to shit on camera. So. Unless you want to match that. <laughs> Dude, what's the quick math? Hold on. The quick math is 1500 Let's say you're just working five days a week. Times five. Times 52. It's $390,000 a year, Johnny. <laughs> Done. <laughs> Done deal. Fuck, man. I would, qu- I would quit my job and do that for $200,000 a year. So, jumbled listeners... Y'all want some videos? You know my email. Daddy's going to retire early. Yeah. I mean, I'll sort of be a little upset if you pay $1500 to watch Johnny shit on somebody, but but you won't pay $500 to get us an address, you know. Hey man, if that's not their kink, it's not their kink, Zach. Come on, quit being hey. a kink shamer. I'm, so- <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, that's true. I I'm definitely kink shaming there. You prude. All I'm saying is I'm deserving too. Hey, guess what, Johnny? You got I'm, competition, dude. I'm going to cut you in. You're going to be my editor and my videographer. Oh, oh okay. Can yeah, I make I'll some... split it 50-50 with you. Every once in a while, there's just going to be a surprise shit that just <laughs> flies on camera, and that's going to be yeah, man. from me. 50-50. It's already I'm... dirty. I'm, I'm the talent, you. but you know you got to get in like you got to get some close shots. You know you got to get right in there, <laughs> right in there. So wait, so it's uh seven fifty uh seven fifty a person per day. Yeah, I mean shit, dude. Yeah, let's do it. I mean I don't know what that'd be after tax. You would have to stare at my butthole a lot, but it's not like it's anything you haven't seen before. I, I've yeah, I've, like I've said, I've seen that. Johnny, I've seen I, I think I've seen every square inch of you, bud, and uh, you sure have. You're a lucky that's... man for it. <laughs> it's true, it's true. Uh, gosh, I uh, I found a picture online. Oh boy. And it's just a meme, but uh, knowing that you're a uh, you're a pretty big car buff, I thought you'd get you'd get a kick out of it. We finally found the transmission. Oh, yep. That is 100% true. So everyone that's wondering, uh, Fast and Furious, they shift all the time. Every time they're like, oh, I need more power. Oh, I'll just shift. Uh, so it's a gear shifter that has 12, uh, 12 speeds on it. Yeah, and two reverses. Two reverses, <laughs> yeah. Those cars go hella fast in reverse. <laughs> it's true. It's true. They. Uh, I think I've seen, and I don't recall what movie it was, but... I think I remember seeing a car going neck to neck in reverse. 
mm-hmm. with another car that was going forward. That's an Infinity Reverse gear. It's a very special mod. <laughs> yeah, I would love to see that transmission, dude. I'd yeah, love and, to see it. Yeah, and the fact that they can go 100 miles an hour in reverse and, like, perfectly straight and no issues. Yeah. Yeah, well, when you have all those reverse gears... That's true. And, and a lot one, of talent. And then sometimes you have to hit reverse to... Yep. And then you got a nitrous hit in reverse. Yes. Well, I mean, it makes sense. Duh. Yeah. Duh. Do you see that fucking Hobbs and Shaw has grossed almost a billion dollars? No, I haven't, but that does not surprise me. Jason Statham and, uh, and The Rock. I mean... How can you go wrong with that? Uh, I know. It just pisses me off. Why? Because cause Dwayne The Rock Johnson is not only one of the most attractive people on this planet, he's also one of the wealthiest. Is that why it pisses you off? No. I don't, I'm happy for him. He's earned his success. He works really hard. I don't like that they just fucking took over fast and furious and it's not even about cars now they're just like fucking superheroes walking around that's true they they put they put fast and furious on the uh on the name of the movie but it has nothing to do with it no i mean fast and the furious was going in that direction for the last like you could arguably say the last three or four sure before this but now it's just like here's a supercar and i'm a superhuman and then we're gonna smash each other in the face with wrenches yeah like come on yeah yeah but I, made, I'm boycotting that movie. I will never watch it. You'll never watch it. I'll never watch it. Nope. What if, uh, what if I paid you fifteen hundred dollars? The day? same price, same price you would get shit on somebody. You gotta I will watch, watch that movie Shop. for fifteen hundred dollars. I will watch that movie on repeat for fifteen hours straight. Wow, that's a hundred dollars an hour. I. Uh, that's all that will play. At my house, from the time I wake up to the time I pass out, <laughs> I will put it on every fucking TV. <laughs> That's like a nightmare, dude. Where you, you're like, you're like, I need to get away, and you fucking leave a room, but it's just Hobbs and Shaw in the next room. Can't you can't escape it, dude. I would love to see that. Can I, can we make sure that we get like some uh, CC footage? Like you uh, well, gotta we, have some cameras set up. For you whenever. absolutely have to. Yeah, yeah. I just I want to see the slow mental de- uh, degradation that happens of <laughs> you at hour fourteen with Hobbs and Shaw has been playing all day long. I'll be just reciting it, work like <laughs> mumbling, drooling. Mumb- <laughs> on the rock, <laughs> big strong rock. <laughs> I'm Jason Statham. I play the same person every role. Dude, that's true. He does. Mm-hmm. But uh, mm-hmm. what was what was that movie he was in? The Mechanic. Death no. Race. Transporter. No. Transporter. That's what it was. Or Transporter on Steroids, a.k.a. what was it? The High Voltage one or whatever? Yeah, was that the one where he like had to... He, he had to like, shock ha- himself... He well, he had to keep his heart rate up, right? So he just like ended up having sex in public or something like yeah. that to keep yeah. his. Yeah, that was uh that was ridiculous, but that's also like the entertaining. Uh, that's the start of where all my kinky fan- fantasies came, you know. Ah, it's public like, uh, Jay- sex. Uh, Jason Statham can can do it in the middle of public, you know? Why can't I? You basically look like him. Yeah, it's like Jason Statham, but with more hair. Yeah. And and a taller body and uh and less less abs. Less abs. Definitely less abs. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh Zacky boy. Oh Johnny. I'm Zachy trying to see if there's boy. Oh, I love that, dude. I love that. Um I'm trying to see if there's anything else that I had written down. There's like stuff that I write down in here and I'm like, what does that even mean? You ever do that where you take yeah. notes and you're like, what? It's a brilliant idea in the moment. And then uh, you're just like, uh, what, who, where, what? For instance, for instance, two words. And let me go ahead and apologize to any of our religious uh, listeners. Uh, number one, you, you probably don't care since you've listened this far. Two words, crucifix dildo. I have no idea what it means. 
I can only imagine where you were looking up. No idea what it means, but it's in my it's in my uh, it's in my list of things to talk about. So, all right, another ten minutes on crucifix dildos. What, what's your take? I mean, imagine it's like a four sided dildo, and there's just some massive scissoring going on. Probably. Do you, th- <laughs> do you think it's a spiritual? Uh, a, spiritual a spiritual awakening. Yeah. I need some more context. Like, I feel like that's something you wake up in the middle of the night and you and you think you have a great idea and you wrote it down, but you don't have context around it. <laughs> yeah, that was I'm like also, right after a dream or something like. Yeah, that. I'm also a little bit concerned about what you're dreaming about. Uh, pff, dude, I don't know. I don't know when I wrote it. Down. It could have been the middle of the day. It could have been like two. In maybe the morning that no was idea. like a uh, a porno version of The Exorcist. Maybe. And maybe you have to you have to fuck the demon out of. Uh, <laughs> yeah it's like uh the freshly 18 year old girl just because she was like younger i think in that movie and that's wrong sure sure and then you know the priest comes out with the crucifix dildo and that's like the superpower that they needed to yeah dude there's there's a porno in there oh yeah oh yeah <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah oh yeah <laughs> so um i do want to do a quick shout out for a book i know you're already probably already done the audible sponsor and i have not recorded the bit but you should check out thank you for my service written by matt best former army ranger co-founder of black rifle coffee um brilliant book pretty funny if you like some military humor and just humor in general and hearing funny life stories about someone who did you know spent I think he did five tours as an army ranger and then did some contracting with the cia allegedly because it's been redacted yeah pretty funny that should be okay. our book of the month okay so what was what was that again one more time thank you for my service written by matt best co-authored by ross patterson who was a book of a month um that i that i did um a little while back uh, it was at night she cries while he rides his steed, the first yeah, yeah, yeah. novel for dudes. I yeah. don't know if you gave that one a listen, but it's uh, it's definitely worthwhile. Um, he helped Matt finish and polish that book up. It's pretty cool. Talks a bit about his his. It's kind of like a an auto, almost an autobiography about who he was as a kid, um, yeah. as like kind of a a uh, a lanky teenager, emo teenager, in like a screamo band, and how then he he got into the military came from a military family and then how he pursued um becoming a ranger in special forces and then how he found himself after he got out of the military and then how he made his way to the cia and then how his business strategy basically and how black rifle has been so successful it was on new york times bestseller it's on a bunch of bestseller lists um so i would say give it a look that's my audible pitch for the week you can cut that out and use it for every episode for the rest of september i give you permission okay perfect so guys again that's going to be audibletrial.com slash jumbled to get your free audiobook again that's thank you for my service by matt best correct one t m-a-t best there you go that's going to be it guys Mm -hmm. um and Johnny, I feel comfortable with the uh, length of time we've got on this one, bud. You look like Wrap you're, up, baby. You look like you're a little sleepy too, so I want to let you go. Awesome, I appreciate that. I need to go eat some more foods. All right, bud. Uh, guys, again, uh, thank you for for your patience while we were on vacation. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this one. It was great to get back on the microphone again. Uh, looking forward to what we got coming down the pike, and uh, we hope that you guys are too. Please uh, check us out on all social media at Jumbled Podcast. Send emails to jumbledpodcast at gmail.com or johnny.jumbled at gmail.com. Uh, head over again to audibletrial.com slash jumbled to get that free 30-day trial and a free audiobook. Uh, head over to patreon.com slash jumbled and pay $500 to get us an address. Or, you know, hey, maybe we'll do a new uh, a new tier for whatever other kinks you guys have. You guys want to see some higher some higher tiers? We'll do it. We'll we'll set them up. We have no shame. If you guys are willing to pay the price, we're willing to put them up. We got bills to pay. We hungry. We, boy, tell me about it. Um, and thank you for wherever you're listening, but please head over to iTunes. Give us a rating and a review. Five-star review. Keep that five-star rating pristine. We do appreciate you guys, and we'll see you guys next week. 
for another episode of Jumbled, your favorite podcast. About nothing. Just nothing this time. I, I You know, I was thinking about it and I panicked and we were all over the place and, you know, I just, I failed and I apologize. That's it. Rerecord the episode. All right, run it back. We'll see you guys next week. Bye.